Okay, I'm going to do my best to only label the um, most... <laughs> do you agree that our last picture got a little messy? There are a couple things I forgot that are in plants and animals, but I'm going to try really hard only to label the things that we didn't label previously. So things like the nucleus. Do you see it? Home kids, I love you all so much. I can't help it. I just have to draw a little arrow at least. I won't label it. I will, I'll try not to make it messy. But yes, we have a nucleus. We know that this is the eukaryote, even though it's a different kind of eukaryote than we just looked at. So this guy has the nucleus. You can see the nucleolus. Do you see the rough endoplasmic reticulum? Do you see the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Do you see the Golgi apparatus making its little vesicles that are bubbling off with cell products? That stuff is all there. I gotta say, loud and proud, like put this somewhere that you're not gonna forget it. Who's this guy? Did we see this guy before? I'm gonna, I said I wasn't gonna write things down unless they were different, but I am writing this one down because I do not want you to forget that this is here. Who is that? It's my favorite. It's the mitochondrion. Plants have mitochondria. Who remembers why, what mitochondria even do? They make energy. So what does that tell you? If plants have mitochondria, what does that tell you about their energy needs? They need energy. They have mitochondria. They're going to go through the processes to make energy that mitochondria also do. Do you see someone maybe similar to the mitochondrion that looks different than what we saw in the animal cell? Well, this is who I'm looking at. There's a couple of things that are different, but I want, do you agree? Like, dude, it's like the exact same size as a mitochondrion, except it has different looking stuff on the inside. Another little hint about who is this guy and where did he come from? This is the chloroplast. And chloroplasts, is this true, are only found in plants and plant-like protists. So there are some single-celled um, critters that have chloroplasts inside them. They have nuclei, they're eukaryotes, and they're plant-like protists, and they have chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are where photosynthesis takes place. And if you do one thing today, go find a plant. There's a whole bunch of them out there, out my window. And pat the plant and say thank you because photosynthesis is how we are here. The process of photosynthesis is the thing that provides us with energy ultimately from the sunshine. Let's just draw a sunshine here and we'll draw little heart eyes because this makes us very happy. Um, photosynthesis is huge. Thank you plants for doing the work of providing us with an energy source because I would definitely want chloroplasts if I could, but I don't have any, so instead I have to eat. All right, let's see what else we got going on here that's unique. How about this thing? I'm going to label, I'm going to label two things here for you. One, I'm going to capture this little tiny line. What is that? We've seen it before. All cells have it. What is it? It's the cell membrane. And just as a reminder, I'm going to make a phospholipid by layer. Just one, two phospholipids there. There's way more in the plant's um, cell membrane. 
plants have a cell membrane, but what else do you see? Do you see anything else that's kind of weird? How about this giant structure outside the cell membrane? So the cell membrane is internal to this bigger um, defining border wall. This is the cell wall. And animal cells do not have, animal cells and plant, I mean, animal-like protists do not have a cell wall, but all plants do. It's why plants can stand up. It's like they're, it, it provides them with structure. It's made out of cellulose, which was one of those glucose um, complex carbohydrates that we looked at. It's, it's a very tough, strong structure that lets plants stand loud and proud. This is another structure that lets plants um, stand loud and proud. This is uh, called the central vacuole, and it's filled with water. And it a lot like when a plant gets thirsty, the central vacuole will shrink. And guess what happens to our plant? It wilts. Central vacuole prevents the plant from wilting. So having enough water to keep it like all hydrated and happy is um, one of the ways that plants can uh, carry on and do their thing. There's something else I wanted to tell you but I can't remember what it is. We did a good job. You see ribosomes in there. Um, you see the cytoskeleton parts in there. There's this interesting orange circle. I don't know if that's supposed to be something different because I don't think we saw colored in orange. We didn't see it like that in the other one. I, I'm not sure if that was that's something unique, but if you had to name it, what would you call that thing? some kind of vesicle or maybe a lysosome. And again, you, I might be able to tell you something about what's inside it, and then you could decide if it's a vesicle or a lysosome, um, but that's not something you can tell just from an image like this. All right, let's look at our prokaryotes now.